The tussle for power in Tamil Nadu started with the death of former Chief Minister Jayalalitha. However, it was not a battle amongst political parties, but factions were created within the ruling party AIADMK. Edipadi Palinasamy from the Sashikala camp, who took an oath as CM on 16 February, won the trust vote, proving his majority in the assembly two days later. 89 DMK MLAs were evicted by the Speaker from the assembly. They protested aggressively, demanding for a secret ballot, alleging that the AIDMK MLAs were coerced into supporting Palani Sami. The House was adjourned twice before the eviction took place. Palani Sami won with a majority of 122 votes in his favour. But I personally think, like, uh, in a situation like this, uh, there could be little more transparency in the process of conducting the vote, and then the it's a confidence vote, and also saying that, like, you know, there is no precedence for a secret ballot. Mm. And secret ballot is the demand of the opposition party, and also, like, uh, a group of people who seem to uh, uh, challenge the leadership of the... Uh, uh, if uh, the other party parliaments are any faction, so say you can say that it's such a faction. So under such circumstances, like you know, um, if you're just going to call for the vote of confidence and then like you know everything has to flow according to the script of the government, yeah. it's that's not politics. So if you're, uh, DMK being the the largest opposition party with uh, 90 plus members with its alliance. And uh, it has a right to ask, to demand certain transparency and how the whole thing should be done. And uh, But this does not justify the chaos, confusion and then the, the violence in the house. Tamil Nadu is undergoing a political pandemonium ever since the death of Jayalalitha. O Pani Selvam was declared the chief minister hours after her death on 5th February. However, Pani Selvam resigned after an AIADMK MLA meeting on 5th February, setting the stage for VK Sasikla to be the next chief minister. Confusion aggravated when O Pani Selvam retracted from his decision by alleging that he was coerced into it. Amid the furor, Sasikla's swearing in was delayed due to the governor's absence. AIDMK was clearly divided in two factions demarcated as Pani Selvam's camp and Sasikla's camp with party members choosing their sides. Since Pani Selvam has been threatened and forced to give a resignation, and after a post resignation, he has revealed in the public and also he might have appealed to the donor. Then the governor has a responsibility if a person in a force and compulsion he is given a resignation. By without knowing he also accepted or whatever. Now there is a two group is already there. One group is a, a less number and another group has a more number. That group not allow the other it is a kept in one place. Who kept out of themselves? This all the uh, public uh, know. What the government should have done, he should have asked uh, the uh, MLA and the MLAs come to the assembly. He said, by whom do you want that? The selection of Sasikala is in uh, dispute. Because according to the uh, ADM a person should complete minimum five years for membership. Then he or she become a party uh, office bearer. Let alone the, the topmost uh, office bearer of a general secretary. But she, is, she has been expelled from the party in 2012 by the late uh, CM and late general secretary. And then there is a, a huge uh, apological letter and uh, confession and all these things. 
see in the electorate with the condition that the other family members should not enter in the house or the party. These are the conditions. But the Sasikala did not complete five years on the new entry. Okay. So automatically it is a dispute. So that is where the Pandit Selvam was climbed. So it's all politically. When she stayed climbed for the office of Chief Minister, people were quite stunned, more than surprised. And then uh, they knew her contribution to, they knew her role and management of the AD and the party, but they would not let her assume the reins of the Chief Minister. There's a kind of a moral blocket, the space. And uh, so when she was kind of like, you know, not being swan in, uh, two reasons. One is about with the legal case pending and also large disapproval in the civil society. You cannot simply say there was no disapproval. People did not worry about her. Because people are worried about only that people like uh, O. Panisal rebelled against her. Otherwise, he's a weathercock. He's not going to just come out and challenge her unless he feels there is a uh, discontentment, disapproval of Sashikala assuming the charge of uh, Chief Minister. And by the case of Sasikala, what she is trying to uh, do now, she wants to become a, 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 a Jayavelika. Therefore, she is, uh, she is uh, herself, herself become a Chinna. He has also been the choice of uh, not only Jayalita and he has also been the kind of a consensus for a candidate of both Sashikala and Jayalita. Or like, you know, uh, she he certainly would not have become the CM or an interior chief minister without the consent of Jayalita, without the consent of Sashikala, when, even when Jayalita was alive. And then what I feel is that in asking him to step down, not that he feels that he was driven out of the power, but he senses something like a uh, a political instinct that for whom he is vacating does not enjoy the approval of the popular approval of the masses. Therefore, he is in a position to rebel against her, actually. And, uh, and ultimately in politics is that loyalty is not to people but to power. And uh, so the power comes from the people. And even if you want to justify that, uh, that democratizing the ethos, but his instinct is that he understands the groundswell has changed against her. So that about he wants to test himself. But if he had remained loyal and like you know, he had just packed bags and walked down to his place and allowed uh, things to happen. But I feel that um, I don't consider him to be a very competent uh, administrator and not as a good leader. But He's an, he's an historical factor because he was able to prevent a person from ascending to the power of chief ministership even for a week if she had been a chief minister before being sentenced to the uh, conviction in high court she becomes a part of the official history in India, in Tamil Nadu which at least that brought and is suffered by the party and the people not by the government in Tamil Nadu on February 14, the Supreme Court set aside Sasikala's acquittal by the Karnataka High Court in the disproportionate asset case and restored in full the trial court conviction of September 2014. Sasikala and four others were sentenced to four years of imprisonment and a fine of Rs 10 crore each. Even after Sasikala comes out after serving her four-year sentence, she was rendered disqualified to contest elections for the next six years as per the Supreme Court judgment. Paneer Selvam was evicted from the party on the same day. Sashikala surrendered in a Bangalore jail on February 15th. Before surrendering, Sashikala appointed Parinasamy as the legislature party chief, pitting him against Paneer Selvam. The late Jayalalitha also is a convicted in the same disproportionate as case. Okay. But people are not talking about is maybe because of she's more and also it is because of uh, the uh, level of uh, uh, psychophancy, level of devotees she had are still carrying, even as a legacy is still carrying. Therefore, uh, people are not able to, uh, not openly talking. I mean, it's because
because they did not retaliate and then uh, the house could be still they could have the vote i mean what if they had gone on responding to the, the situation or like circumstances and uh, the whole thing the house could have been like you know the sign sign d the house for like you know senate would have to be adjourned and uh, it would have to be a kind of like you know before testing the floor and i think tactically that it served them stay quiet and stay calm in such uh, situation so as far as administration's competence is concerned he is also a tainted man if a party is also like sufficiently tainted leader actually with uh, corruption uh, snag around him and in his family and his uh, interest in him uh, so he is not somebody who is who be a referee as a king or anything administration and uh, but on the other hand about like as in um, we we have not had anybody who kind of admit a leader who is a good administrator in the recent period too and we have had leaders who are popular leaders and also like you know jayalalitha for all her uh, charismatic influence and the position she was still a person who can comprehend many issues in administration and then like you know take has some kind of communication she could communicate to people and uh, so you we have a situation like with panit sarvam or with uh, gada party we don't anticipate a kind of like um, as leaders and as administrators about like you know but more than about government's administration if we know if this politicians don't interfere much with uh, like what they call preventing something or manual something administration has a way of functioning people can take care of themselves i i feel about a lot of our disturbed i'm not um, cynical but what i find about administration is that it can uh, with the bureaucracy and uh, most of the time in india reality is that it's a bureaucracy which runs the government and kind of runs the country the frenzied developments of the tamil nadu political scenario and the fragmentation of the aidmk has disturbed the cohesion of the party with no political air that can match up to jayalalitha's charisma the party's future remains questionable the agenda will be completely disappeared as far as this future is very very clear because uh they don't because the party is completely over dependent on one person only earlier also this Uh, MG Ramachandran, MG. But MG, annoyingly, annoyingly, somewhere, see, he brought Jayalalitha into the political uh, carrier, and MG has given her some of the very important political assignment. And also, he has been Rajya Sabha MP. He was. Uh, propaganda party propaganda secretary and many other other things so see uh, i think go up in a very long time even when enjer died she is not a overnight become a uh, leader of the ad she has uh, seen a lot of struggle she has faced a lot of struggle and then she emerges as a honorable leader uh, this is the beginning of the end of admk as a party but for a political party that we talk we don't talk in terms of few years we talk in terms of like decades and i don't see them surviving and uh, as a close uh, a ruling party for the next 2 years and then from 2 years to the next further from by 21 or uh, 2021 there likely to be more parties coming branching out of the adnk and uh, in many ways this is the beginning of the end for BJP is still uh, is quite actively engaged in this whole politics politics that's been happening. They were active when Jalita was in the hospital and uh, the, the backroom politics, and then they got uh, they got around to uh, kind of like you know uh, what they call like a stick and carrot policy with Paneer Selvam, and uh, then even with Sasi Kala, uh, they they had this idea about you. you see, uh if you and you and i and common people might know that sashikala has been convicted in the supreme court in the last few days but to say that the bjp did not know anything about sashikala is 
is, is a lie. But they were very comfortable with her. And uh, during the prayer to the funeral, and then at the time of funeral, and uh, the, all the top leadership, and like, you know, then I, mean, I, I, I wonder about it, like, you know, even if BJP had not consented to it, how can you give the national flag to her, actually? I mean, when she's not even a blood relative. And I find about this, a lot of this politics kind of inconsistency. They certainly wanted to fish in the struggle waters of the ABMK. Okay. 